Hello everybody, this is Marty from Dog's Blog with tonight's podcast of the Frank Carson et al. trial, Friday, February 15th, 2019. If you listen to the noontime report, Praveen Singh was still on the stand. Um, Marlissa Ferreira had completed her direct examination and uh, it hit the fan this afternoon and things went sideways as this case has a tendency to do. Percy Martinez is doing cross-examination uh, for being Singh and he's asked this afternoon court got started around uh, the jury up it was up around 13 145 judges on the bench just about two or three minutes later and Percy Martinez started with Praveen Singh again this afternoon, asking him if he has been charged <clears throat> in a number of criminal cases in federal and local courts, state courts. He's asked if he's been charged with uh, uh, some fraud cases, a real estate fraud, also accused of plotting to shoot a neighbor who is a correctional officer. Um, is there also there is a uh, accused of a solicitation of a robbery, six counts of mail fraud, seven counts of false statements to banks. And he was, uh, Percy Martinez asking if he was trying to get help from uh, Kurt Bunch on his pending cases. He says, no, I wasn't. He asked him on 11 11 5 of 2013 interview with Kurt Bunch, he said he wanted his cases to go away. He said, no, that's not true. He asked him, Percy Martinez asked him if he tell Kurt Bunch the reason that he wanted to talk to him is to deal his charges away. He said, well, yes and no. So he doesn't really want to come out and flat out admit it. He asked uh, Praveen Singh if he said that if he could brush um, his other cases under the mat, make all his cases go away, just brush them away, the old uh, terminology of taking a broom and uh, 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 sweeping the uh, the dirt underneath the carpet type of uh, thing. And he said, well, yeah, I did say that. On 11-15 interview, he told Kurt Bunch um, that he was ready to deal. Uh, his reason was to deal. Uh, he said, yes, I did that. He and again, he admitted to stating that he wanted it to brush his cases away. He offered details of Frank Harrison cases that he had been involved with, um, including homicide cases. So uh, Percy asked him if he was willing to trade information to help himself. He said no. But just before that, he said he'd offered to trade information on cases. Percy Martinez asked him if he was willing to trade information on three homicides that was being handled by Frank Carson. Apparently he had some involvement in. Uh, he was willing to turn over some notes or go get some notes from Frank Carson's office. Praveen Singh said he was not actually going to give the information. He just told Kurt Bunch he would get all the notes and all the files uh, to investigators. Uh, he told Kurt Bunch that, but he said he wasn't really going to do it, I guess is what he's meaning. He said his boat was sinking, and Frank Carson is too. His boat is sinking too. Frank Carson did something that he doesn't know anything about. He also said, made a statement, I don't give a fuck about uh, who's right 
He's and he's saying basically he's saying fuck everybody. I'm taking care of myself. Kurt Bunch had asked him during that interview if he had any loyalty to Frank Carson, and he said he gave up his own brother in the same way. Why wouldn't he give up Frank Carson? He said, yeah, I said something like that. He denied um, holding anything back in regards to the Corey Coffin case. Said he didn't want to sit in jail. And he denied telling Kurt Bunch that is what he's saying. He said, again, he said, I don't give a fuck, fuck everyone. He said he doesn't care about anyone. He will do what the investigators want. That's what he said in that interview. He didn't know Corey Kaufman or anything about that is what he kept saying also. He also said that he would wear a wire on Frank Carson to get information. And he did keep saying that Frank Carson denied any involvement. Frank Carson never talked about uh, any incident or actions at, in his yard where they caught anybody or trying to catch anybody. Um, he said Frank um, Navarro had asked in that same interview if Frank Carson was looking for people in the yard. He did not recall whether he said that or not. He was refreshing. Uh, after he refreshed, uh, he had told investigators Frank Naharson never talked about hiding in the yard. And he never hired anybody to go back there that he knew of. Um, in the 2513 interview, he told investigators, I don't know shit on Corey Kaufman and he was more than willing to testify against Frank Carson. He said he first heard about the homicide after the search warrant was served, uh, probably talking about the uh, July 15th of 2012 search warrant. And he didn't know anything in regards to Corey Kaufman's miss going missing or being murdered. He was not sure about the thefts, uh, hearing about the thefts before or after March 30th of 2012. He asked uh, the investigators, why isn't Frank Carson getting arrested? He says, I am worried about myself, is what he told the investigators. Kurt Bunch asked about Frank Carson saying it is done. Um, it's not a problem anymore. It has been handled. It is done. Something like that. He didn't really recall that. He refreshed. And he said, yes, Kurt Bunch did say that. So it was Kurt Bunch that said it to him, not the other way around. Uh, Kurt Bunch said, Frank Carson said, stay off the property. And there was an objection with that. I don't know where they were going with that and why it was objected to. But uh, Kurt Bunch had made a statement about staying off the property. So Percy Martinez asked Praveen Singh. There was a sidebar in there. And then uh, Percy Martinez asked, uh, you didn't make those comments about it is done. Kurt Bunch did. And he said that's true. Um, he asked him if he... Yeah, Frank Carson said it's over with, along with it, it it's done. And he said no, he didn't say that. Kurt Bunch did. <clears throat> uh, Praveen Singh was asked if uh, did he say Frank Carson said stay off property. He said no. Kurt Bunch did. Uh, Kurt Bunch also said, if, um, Frank put you in this position. He said yes, that's what he said. Um, and he talked about getting arrested due to dumbass people uh, or if he was going to get arrested it was due to a dumbass Frank Carson he said yes that's what Kurt Bunch said 
He was asked about, uh, did he file a 20 million claim, uh, an immediate objection, and they all raced to the sidebar. I don't know what that was about. Um, in 2016, Frank Carson was in custody. And Praveen Singh had gone to one of the Carson-owned properties on McHenry and telling the tenant something that led to an objection. I don't know what that was about either. Um, there goes to another sidebar. Uh, the judge said, well, we'll get back to that later. So there's an issue of some sort there. Percy Martinez asked Praveen Singh if he had made a false statement under oath in the last 10 years. He said no. He asked him if he testified in the United States versus uh, Salado case. He said no. He asked him if he testified in Fresno Federal Court during that time that they're talking about. He said no. First, Martinez um, stated that he wanted to impeach the witness. He actually wanted to refresh his memory, and the judge says there's no memory loss. He's just denying it. And so Percy Martinez wanted to impeach him with a transcript of a testimony that he gave in that case that he said he didn't do. And, then, of course, it raised a major objection from Marlissa Ferreira. Uh, they go to a sidebar, and it turned everything upside down for the rest of the day. Um Jury was out of the room at 2.32. Um, the sidebar didn't resolve the issue, and they uh, ended up uh, having to try to work this thing out. And uh, I'll try to explain it the best I can. It's really a mess. So the jury came up at uh, 1.46, and they were out of the courtroom at 2.32 uh, this afternoon. So what is that? Uh, a little less than an hour. Um, about 45 minutes actually. Um, so, Marlissa, Fer the judge is asking what the objection is by uh, Marlissa Ferreira, and she's saying that the testimony uh, that was given by Praveen Singh in that federal case, Frank Carson was the attorney that had put Singh on the stand. Uh, Praveen Singh testified that. He was a, a Fresno Police Department Reserve police officer for seven years, and he was asked what his occupation is. And that was one of the responses he gave, along with some other things. Um, apparently, the next day, Praveen Singh did not show up in court, probably for cross-exam. I don't know the old details. And... Um, so his testimony was struck in, was struck in that case. So Marlissa Ferreira's argument is the testimony was struck in that quoted case, and she's still looking for the documentation of, of what she's trying to say, and she, she can't find it in all the stack of paperwork she has. But she says once a testimony is struck, it does not exist. So he cannot be impeached with his own testimony under oath because it doesn't exist. That's Marlissa Ferrer's stance. Uh, there was a long delay. Everybody's trying to read what's going on here. It really turned into a mess. All the attorneys were trying to figure it out. We end up taking a break. And um, as you know, the, the jury probably ended, the jury ended up being done for the day, but she brought them, didn't bring them back up until about four o'clock. But Judge Zuniga finally said it's pretty clear from the record that the testimony was stricken. Praveen Singh had left uh, the, the one day and did not return for cross-examination the next. Uh, there was no explanation for his absence, uh, apparently, and so he was not, his testimony was struck by the, the federal court. So Percy Martinez's argument is, um, 
His testimony was taken. He took an oath to tell the truth. He didn't do that. Um, and he testified that he was a reserve police officer for seven years with Fresno Police Department. And Praveen Singh was never a, a, a reserve or regular police, regular or reserve police officer anywhere, let alone Fresno. Um, he says Marlissa Ferrer was trying to divert from the truth. Praveen Singh is a perjurer, and the prosecution is well aware of this fact. The prosecution is hiding the truth. And it should not be hidden from the jury. Praveen Singh credibility is the issue here for the jury to decide. It's not the facts of that federal case that they want to bring out. It's the fact of the one thing that he said that he was a police officer with Fresno Police Department. He tried to lie to the court. And this was in front of a jury in federal court to gain credibility with that jury in that court. So Percy Martinez says he cannot say it's unreliable information because it was testimony in a federal case. He says no part of the case is going to be discussed, the merits of the case or anything else just his false testimony only. Jai Gohill argued that Praveen Singh said he never testified in another case and he has lied about another case. The prosecutors and attorneys involved can prove it. He's talking about the federal case. Uh, many areas to impeach on this issue. Uh, he also had brought up the fact that the prosecutor on that case was or is now a federal judge or magistrate, whatever they call him. And he says he's more than willing, uh, Jai Gohill said he's more than willing to uh, subpoena him and get him in court. Attorney Hans argued. Um, if it doesn't exist, this gives a person a clear lie, clear reason to lie in court because they're unable to prosecute the individual, saying it never happened due to the stricken testimony. So can he be prosecuted for lying in, a, in under oath in, in a federal court if his testimony is stricken? He says it doesn't make sense. He doesn't believe that's the way the law reads. Marlissa Ferreira argued that she had brought this up, the issue up to the court prior, um, that this could be a problem, Praveen Singh's testimony could be a problem. Judge Aniga interrupted her and said, you never said a word about this stricken testimony and we could have dealt with this before had you done so. Marlissa Ferrer refers to the Beverly Woody testimony that was stricken from the preliminary hearing. So it means that that testimony never existed. So it's not relevant at this point whether he testified or not. Uh, Praveen Singh said he never testified. So is he the one on the stand in federal court? She says, we don't know that. We don't know it was him testifying in federal court. Maybe as somebody else that duped Frank Carson, pretending that he was Praveen Singh, and, or many, or and many other peoples have been duped by, uh, could have been duped by him too. The issue was that he was not crossed, uh, and Frank Carson apparently, according to the transcript, was okay with his testimony being stricken uh, in that federal case. Uh, again, she says it's unknown who was testifying. 
or this defendant, that's the attorney in this case, suborned perjury um, by putting whoever this person was on. They don't know if it's being saying there's no way to authenticate it is what she's saying. Percy Martinez, um, uh, argued again back that it was odd people knows it was, uh, the people, it's odd that the people actually knew that it was Praveen Singh as they provided discovery of Praveen Singh testifying in that case. Um, Praveen Singh had testified falsely, um, was just in it was in federal court um, the investigators did a check and Praveen Singh wife uh, showed the uniforms um, that were hanging in the closet or folded up or wherever they were that he had Fresno Police Department uniforms in his jacket he said but it was all a lie the entire Fresno Police Department was a lie the prosecution is holding a technicality by putting Praveen Singh, or hiding by a technicality, by putting Praveen Singh on the stand, knowing full well he is lying as before. Um, Praveen Singh's testimony, and it was, in, it was in February of 2011, it was the United States versus Salado. He knows Frank Carson... From the law office, so Frank Carson knew who he was. He worked there. There is no question of identity of who was testifying. Kurt Bunch's report on 8 7 of 2018, um, which they, they received, uh, saying that he received transcript from the U.S. Attorney as part of the public record and the testimony of Praveen Singh. All officers of the court were ID'd, uh, meaning the prosecution, the defense attorney, the judge, uh, the court reporter, anybody, the clerk, all that would be forth, and it was Praveen Singh that had testified. The uh, presently, they are simply trying to hide Praveen Singh lying under oath. Um, the jury was called up to re be released at... Uh, 355. So the question is, um, and uh, there's been a lot of talk about this. Uh, I, I did do some inquiries, not with the attorneys in this case, but I talked to some other people. Um, and the, the question is, Praveen Singh's testimony was struck in that federal case. So his testimony cannot be considered by the jury in that case. Does that mean that he did not testify? Well, that's what the DA is trying to say. But he took an oath. He got on the stand, took an oath. He identified who he was, as they always do when they take the stand. Um, and he promptly lied. So does that mean it never happened because the testimony was struck? In? Are they able to refer to previous statements, uh, if you want to call it a statement, uh, or if you want to call it, you know, it's testimony that he did in federal court. So does that mean that it's not, can't be used for impeachment? Uh, that's the question. Um, that's this question still up in the air because that's typical. Judge Zuniga can't make a ruling. And uh, the attorneys have to do some more research because she's talking about the evidence code uh, and uh, that it is stricken, so technically it doesn't exist. Well, it did exist. The attorneys were reading his testimony. So physically, there's a document in front of them. They're reading it, so it does exist. So if it was stricken, why is it still in the record? If it didn't exist, why is it still in the official record which was turned over by the district attorney's office in discovery so that's the question uh, can he be impeached with his own words or can the prosecution stand behind um, this uh, what they're calling what the defense is calling a technicality 
Uh, I'm telling you, I certainly don't know. Uh, it's an interesting question, and it's going to be one that's going to have to be, and it's, to tell you the truth, this is the type of thing that's going to end up being case law. So, as other things, uh, probably out of this case also. So, um, that's where we finished it up. Um, we're back at uh, 9.30 uh, Tuesday morning. Um, the jury is actually going to come in a little bit later because they have to resolve this issue. And I think it's a very interesting issue that somebody can stand behind, uh, doesn't have to stand behind their own words that they used in a federal court under oath. So, and there's still a lot more of cross-examination to go. And the status of these witnesses, these are the type of things that have been ongoing in this case. And um, because of the, uh, the type of uh, witnesses that, that they have, um, going on in this case so uh, that they keep parading up onto the stand in this case it's crazy so that's all I got um, the uh, remember um, I have the PayPal button at the bottom of each, of each report you can donate through PayPal you can donate through snail mail if you want uh, my post office box 1115 Houston California um, checks made out to Marty Carlson ser services and uh, and don't forget my sponsor, um, Merced Tile Supply, uh, out of Highway 59 in Merced. They got really do, and I'm not uh, saying that. I really mean it. They got some good stuff over there. If you for your tile needs, they have they have uh, no linoleum, no carpet, any of that stuff. Just good, affordable uh, tile and stuff over there. Check them out. Go check out their website and stuff. Stuff they got. Check out the video I put up on it. So anyway. So, interesting day at the end of the day. Uh, we'll see how this plays out. Uh, Praveen Singh has uh, talked about being a lifelong friend of Frank Carson. And um, then it, when it comes down to it, he's willing to give up his own brother. So, uh, I guess there's no loyalty there. I don't know. So, anyway, um, we're back Tuesday at 930. And I, as I always say, don't take my word for it. Come to court. And find out for yourself. Good night, everybody.